Well, thanks to those joining me live and to those that will be joining me on Archive D-Style Boxing here. going to be doing a um, raw review. I have not done a raw review in who knows how long. And no, this is not a norm. But I thought, you know what, since this is Raw 25, like the 25th anniversary of, of Raw or whatever, like 25 years of Raw, right? 25 years. I wouldn't say the year the, the show was 25 years in the making, but they were making it sound like it was going to be the greatest show ever. They could have stopped talking all oh, of this show. They'll just wait for the show for weeks. They've been pumping up the show. I, I think I heard rumblings a couple months ago, right? Whispers of the show. Oh, the show's coming. I was going to be star studded, right? Now, I don't hate everything about the show, but let me start off by saying this. What a letdown. This is the first time in a very long time that I sat down and I watched WWE Raw live. It's the first time in a long time. I sat through the commercials and everything. I, I, I'm going to do a whole review. I'm going to go over this show for you. And if you're in the chat, yes, I look I look at the chat, but I'm not going to look at it yet. I have some shit I need to say first. Capiche? Why don't you read the chat? Like, 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 like to relax. Chill. I may or may not get through all the comments. It is what it is. There's people on archive that are listening, want to hear my thoughts. And you're listening to them now. By the way, don't forget to thumbs up. Even though I just healed it up, all right, don't forget to thumbs up the video. It takes a second. You know, watch an archive. Please, thumbs it up. All right, well, thumbs it down. I don't care what you do, right? Do something. Thumbs up, thumbs down. But something, one of them. So this is a special edition. By the way, I'll be doing a review for the Royal Rumble this Sunday as well, Okay. I'm going to do one for the Royal Rumble right after. So if you want to tune in, go ahead. Boy, am I going to dread that. Not No, I'm not going to watch the pre-show. Okay, I'm not. I'm just going to do a not, – not a – I'm not going to write notes. I'm just going to come on and just tell you what I think of the show, right? This is a special thing this time. Let's talk about this dumb show, all right? First of all, the start was what I imagined the start to be. They're in the Manhattan Center with Jerry the King Lauder and Jim Ross. Boy, was that refreshing. Memories did come back to me. I liked how they had the entrance with that old school WWF logo type of thing. Uh, but, of course, it's not F anymore. It's just, you know, at the modern-day WWE logo, but old-school style. I like the fact that they just – the ring itself, okay, it was old-school. Okay, the three cutters, blue, white, and red. The turnbuckles were old-school. I like that. I, I don't even know what was the – the commentary table old-school. I don't know. I, I didn't even pay attention if they had – I think they had a steel railing, if I'm not mistaken. I like that. Jerry the King Lawler and you know and, and Jim Ross said we're here live from the Manhattan Center. Oh like, yeah, this is cool. You know, brought brought back memories of Bobby Heenan. Okay, I remember the Macho Man used to do you know uh, these shows at the Manhattan Center. So um, brought back a lot of memories. But then they say. And I went to take it to the Barclays Center. I just like that. I mean, start off with a match or something. Like you're just going to introduce us to Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross. You're going to say a couple words, and then you go straight to the Barclays Center. By the way, what a mistake! Now I don't know if the WWE has a deal with Barclays or whatever, but it should have done, been done. Okay, across the street in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden has a lot more history with the WWF, the WWE, all right? 
for me, even when the WWE was struggling, okay, the Madison Square Garden helped keep them afloat. That even when WCW was red hot because of the loyalty to the McMahons, they, they never, right? They, they, they never let WCW host a show in Madison Square Garden. But okay, maybe Madison Square Garden was booked. You know, I don't know. Uh, that's possible. I, I wouldn't know. But that's where I believe they should have done it. Okay, it should have been in Madison Square Garden and the Manhattan Center. But but that's a small detail, not too much to complain about. Okay. Stephanie and Shane McMahon are in the ring. Jesus Christ. Steph and Shane are getting along. They're no longer feuding, apparently. This is the one day that since it's the 25th anniversary of Raw, they're going to get along. Okay? Oh, by golly gee, we're just getting along with one another. Like brother and sister. Brotherly love, sisterly love. I thought they were supposed to be feuding. I thought one, one was a commissioner of Raw. The other one was a commissioner of SmackDown. And they're supposed to be competing with one another. What happened to that? What happened to them hating each other? What happened to, you know, to all that? Like, what's, what's going on here? What happened to, you know, I'm Shane McMahon. I came back to take this company back from, from Shane and Stephanie. What happened to all that? Like, all that doesn't matter anymore? Like, what? But anyway... Stephanie is you know, pumping up about the, the one person that made this all possible. And I thought, ah, what a great moment here. What a great moment for her to heal it up. I, I thought she was about to thank herself. I, and I thought to myself, even though I hate hearing Stephanie's fucking voice, it would have made some sense to, you know, I don't know, bring back the kayfabe. All right. Please. Um, so, so can somebody find kayfabe? Uh, I don't think I think it's in the back of a milk carton somewhere. Somebody find it, please. Okay, and ship it over to the WWE. Somebody, anybody, please. Vince McMahon comes out. I wasn't even looking. I think I went to take a piss. Uh, swear to God, I went to take a piss, and uh, he he probably did the Vince McMahon strut. Who knows? Maybe they're cool. He gets in the ring, and again, more generic shit. Vince is introduced. He's generic at first. Then he's ready to leave, saying, oh, I don't want to this, that, and the third. And then Stephanie says that she wants to present her father with an award. And Shane is in on it too, by the way. Like they, they work together to get their father this, this, this plaque. That they start a group fund me. A GoFundMe account for, for, for so they can get Vince a plaque, right? Okay. The, this is WWE writing, folks. This is this is what they came up with for the 25th for the opening segment. Okay, by the way, that's what I'm describing to you. Finally, Vince starts to heal it up, and Vince did a very good job at this. I got to give him credit for this. Okay. Said the plaque looked ugly or whatever and cheap. And he said, well, you know, well, I, I, we are in Brooklyn and something like that. And um, it was one of those, you know, he's healing it up. He's trashing your town, but they were liking it. And um, I, it was – I kind of knew what was going to happen because I've heard Stone Cold was in the house. I knew Stone Cold was going to come out. Like I knew that's what they were setting it up for. Stone Cold comes out, big ovation. Like always, the biggest money maker, and if, if one guy deserved to be on a 25th anniversary of Raw, it's Stone Cold. Stone Cold comes out. Stephanie, for whatever reason, left the ring. Stephanie's gone, right? For what reason? Who knows, right? But but she's gone. Vince does a good job talking about how old he is, how fragile he is. He has arthritis. He's living in a in a home or not a home, like a, a retirement home, you know, basically insinuating you can't stun me, man. You can't hurt me. I, I'm, I'm an old man now. A lot has changed, he said. 
And then he, he starts saying, well, Shane McMahon, well, Shane's in his prime. I mean, Shane jumps from one ring, one side of the ring to the other. Shane jumps off, you know, the top of a cell, whatever he said. Shane looks shocked. Shane's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Shane is a legitimate opponent for anyone that's been buried, guys. So, so Shane looks scared, and, and Stone Cold just, you know, he's, he, he raises his hand or whatever, and it's like, it's, of course, we're going to see it coming. Um, but he stuns Shane. You know, it's fun, whatever. And then he ends up not stunning uh, Vince McMahon. Vince gets two beers. They toast. Some of it falls on Vince. Vince looks like he's annoyed about it, but he's not going to say anything because this is stone cold. He's about to walk out of the ring. Now, I want you, I want you everybody to think about this. Stone cold didn't stun you. You are facing the turnbuckle. You're about to exit the ring. No one is stopping you from exiting the ring. But Vince stops in dramatic fashion, turns around. Stone Cold, I, I believe, hugs him again, and then he stuns him. Then Shane gets up. He toasts a beer with him, and then, of course, Stone Cold stuns him. All right, so there's your opening segment for the 25th anniversary of Raw. Could they have done something better? Absolutely. But was it refreshing to see Stone Cold back? Yes. Right? But to be honest, why even start with Shane and Stephanie? You should have just had Vince McMahon walk out and have Stone Cold go come out there and they could have done the same thing. He could have stunned them and be done with it. But that's me. Hey. And then up next, they were pumping it up. Oh, my God, guys, eight women tag match. By the way, that, that one girl uh, doesn't have, um, I forgot her name, but she doesn't have MMA gloves anymore. She has hand wraps. As D-Style has suggested, MMA gloves on, on pro wrestlers look stupid. It's dumb. You're doing worked punches. If we're going to do a work punch, it makes more sense to hit somebody, right? Even though you're not really hitting them. But if you're not really hitting them, it, it, it's better to make people believe you're hitting them with your knuckle, not a fucking MMA glove. I mean, think about it. It's common sense. But anyway, this is WWE creative at its finest. They're going to have a women's Royal Rumble. So they're going to do an eight-man tag. Uh, eight woman tag, I should say. How creative! Like they don't always do this, okay? Like <laughs> this is insane, All right? Now, so some some quick details about this. Uh, Alicia Fox actually hit a very nice Northern Light suplex. It was very well. I was kind of surprised. That that was very well executed, right? And if any, to be honest with you, that should probably be your finisher. But like always, the WWE sucks at this stuff, so they had somebody kick out. All right. Um, they went to commercial about one minute into the match. Eight women walked out to the ring. You're a wrestling company, and you'll rather go to commercial while the match is ongoing rather than when some of the women are walking out to the ring. I mean, that's, that's kind of stupid. People have seen their entrances a million times, but that's me. Well, what, what do I? What does these style know? I, whatever. Okay, uh, Sasha Banks ends up hitting the. Uh, you know the. She gets uh, Fox in the bank statement. Very good move, by the way. I kind of like that move. Um, kind of fits her. It looks believable. Um, you know, especially for the women. So it makes Alicia Fox tap. All right. And then out of nowhere, all the women start fighting each other. I don't know whether they're all fighting one another and, and to, to make clear that it's every woman for themselves. Like we didn't already know that, but you really believe that last segment where Sasha gets kicked in the face by Oscar, even though they're in the same team right now and all that bullshit. Do you really believe that's going to make up for the weeks of bullshit? 
talking to us about how this is history in the making and all these women in the middle of the ring okay that all are supposed to be hating one another are hugging and crying and they're, they're hugging each other kissing each other in the cheek you know doing interviews backstage they put all over youtube talking about how this is history and stephanie comes out there talking about making history and how the WWE is making history and, you know, women's rights and blah, 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 blah. I don't know where you, you want to make clear after an eight-woman tag match that, it, oh, by the way, guys, this is every woman for themselves. Well, no shit. Well, no shit. By the way, I like how, like, all this shit sounds so scripted, man. Right? Like, like you got freaking... Booker T, like, well, I, I don't know who I got to win. I, I can't pick nobody. You know, then Corey Graves is like, oh, I got, I, I'm picking Oscar. And I forget, was it Michael Cole? He's like, oh, I'm going to pick. By the way, wasn't Michael Cole, like, severely injured after being gently tossed and caught by, like, like, like 40 guys outside by, by Braun Strowman? Come on now. Just last week. They never addressed that. Like always, WWE just forgets about shit. Like, ooh, what great promotion. You know, like, I got Nia Jax. I don't know how anybody could eliminate her. Okay. That's usually a sign that she's not going to win, right? By the way, they did uh, make clear. They may have done before, but remember, I don't watch WWE week in and week out, right? But they made clear that it's going to be the same exact rules. Must go over the top rope and both feet must touch the floor. Now, me personally, I've always felt like that was a stupid rule. And I think the only reason it went with that rule because Shawn Michaels botched the move once and one of his feet touched the floor. But to be honest with you, if any body part of yours touches the floor, you should be eliminated. And that's it. You know, but, but whatever, both feet. Like what, what's stopping anybody from... You know, just hopping on one foot outside the ring. I, I know guys have done it before, but but when you think about it, you know, what if you fall outside the ring, but you get up and you know you just like don't 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 plant, just get up with one foot, like you know, like they, they don't think this shit through, but whatever, it's um that's nitpicking at this point, but but hey, that's Shawn Michaels for you. You had to botch a move and they had to you know call an audible. And all these years later, they kind of stuck with that. So there you go. And uh, my point is, I don't know how exciting. I just don't think I might be wrong. And uh, look, there's going to be some surprise appearances and there's going to be some pops and Ronda Rousey might come out and all that. I get that. But, and because it's the first women's Royal Rumble and all blah, 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 blah. But I just, I don't think it's going to be that good. I just don't. And, and it's too dangerous. So some of these women are like five feet tall. Like, like, you know, it's just too dangerous to do the whole over the top rope thing. That's my opinion. But, but hey, to each your own. Teddy Long, Brooklyn Brawler, Coach, Angle, and Brother Love, uh, the Boogeyman, are all backstage. Wow. Like, you know, it's, I hated this segment. But that's what Angle's doing, because Angle's not making matches. Everybody's making their own matches, all right? The Boogeyman, because, because WWE thinks this is great television, okay? Pulls out worms from his mouth, and he puts them in the hand of Coach. That's literally what the segment was. Like, what, what was the point of that? What a waste of television time. What a waste of television. What a waste of Kurt Angle, right? You brought the Brooklyn Brawler back for what? So, so, so he could just watch the boogeyman put worms from his mouth on the hand of, of, of Jonathan Coachman? I would rather you've had Jonathan Coachman do interviews backstage. That would have been better. 
What are you doing? What, what is this? And Brother Love, eh, whatever. I'm never a fan of Brother Love. Finally, we go back to the Manhattan Center. With King, J.R. at King, I'm like, whoa. This is a fresh breath there. And by the way, what a great combination, okay? Way better than today's commentators by far. They do an Undertaker package, by the way. WWE is good at that stuff, those, those packages. Okay, I don't mind that stuff. They're really good at that. Um, it was a cool feeling being there, uh, the old set ring and all. Okay. By the way, so the Undertaker comes out. He's still the dead man. Um, you know, he's still talking in that language. Like everyone's answering to the Reaper and saying it's time for everybody to rest in peace. Like I didn't really get the message of, of like, I was like, are you announcing your retirement, dude? Or are you saying you're coming back? I, I, I kind of missed it, so forgive me. Um, but it was cool to see The Undertaker back. But right now I'm wondering, like, what a waste of the Manhattan Center. All that nostalgia, and I'm like, this, this is all you guys got so far? APA, the Million Dollar Man, Rhino and Slater are all playing poker in the back, by the way. Unbelievable writing. I mean, this is great, right? No, I mean, it was kind of cool seeing the APA back. Um, it's kind of random, you know, but but they're, they're, they're in the back playing poker. Okay. You know. Okay, Ross GM, Laurinaitis comes out. People power, remember that. Regal comes out. Bischoff comes out. Bryant comes out, the big yes chance. Right? So, so they're introducing all these, you know, he was like honorary because he's a GM of SmackDown, but they were introducing, I guess, GMs of, of Raw. Right? The Miz comes out. He faces off with Bryant. And it makes it, it's making me wonder, man, because – was it was it like Booker T or something that said that he has been stealing the moves of 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 Daniel Bryan has been using them in the ring? I really hope, and this is no offense to the Miz, okay? Because I I do like the Miz as a worker, but if Daniel Bryan was to come back, like again, no offense to the Miz, I don't want it to be against the Miz. I want him to come back against an AJ Styles, right? Uh, you know, that's what I would hope. I want him to come back in a in a main event, WrestleMania main event, event caliber match. Not against the Miz. I mean, I'll take the Miz over nothing. Don't get me wrong. But I hope they're not going anywhere with that. But anyway, they do a face-off, and, and there you go. Roman Reigns comes out to a reign... Of booze. <laughs> Pun intended. Just spell differently, that's all. Roman Reigns walks out to a rain of booze. And again, he's holding the bag, the belt like it's a bag. He looks like a damn hitchhiker. Okay? Looking like a damn stupid hitchhiker. Holding the Intercontinental Championship like that. He probably thinks he looks cool. Like, you know, like, he's shitting me. Now, some might say, what's the big deal? Look, he could hold it how he wants it, but I'm just, you know, giving you the observation. He looks like a damn hitchhiker, the way he walks through the ring and shit. Put a thumbs up, Roman. Now, this match, a typical bunch of near falls. The Mirage is interfering off and on. Reigns kicked out of the crush, uh, Skull Crusher finale. Reigns runs into a turnbuckle with no pad. That's a second turnbuckle, by the way. He gets hit with a second Skull Crusher finale. Okay. And the Miz wins to a huge ovation. Now, let me say, I don't know who worked this finish, but that was a damn good finish. Now, now that's professional wrestling. That's how a heel, quote unquote, cheats to win. I could have done without the Misarage, you know, interfering and all that. Uh, they just do that way too much in today's wrestling. 
way too much. But, you know, the way they did the whole removing the second turnbuckle and nobody saw it, and then when Reigns finally hit it, everybody was like, whoa, what happened to the padding on that one? He hits it with a finisher, one, two, three. That is just some classic professional wrestling right there. I like that. That was actually very that, – that was the best part of the show to me. That was good. By the way, I mean, isn't that nuts? Roman Reigns gets pinned, and the place goes crazy. Nobody likes this guy. All right? <laughs> it's insane, man. Roman Reigns, turn him heel. Like, it's this guy has no business being the, the face, a top dog, the guy, because that's not what he is. Nobody would ever cheer like that when if, if they cheated to beat Stone Cold. They would have booed, right? They're, you know, like, this is insane. I mean, you got the reaction that, you know, that you would expect a baby face to get when they finally beat the heel, right? Good match, and I'm definitely glad that the Intercontinental title is off of Roman Reigns. In one hand, but in the second hand, well, we know what the long-term plan is. The long-term plan is for Roman Reigns to get the Universal Championship. And believe me, if Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble, he will have another match with The Miz. He will beat him clean. Okay, just to put that to rest. Reigns will event he will beat the Miz to get the best of the Miz. It's going to happen. He might not take the title off of him, but that's going to happen. I guarantee it. Unless the rumors are true that, that Roman Reigns has been linked to steroids and all this other bullshit that could bring some real bad publicity for the WWE. Unless it, there's a lot of truth to that rumor. Unless that's the case. Best believe Roman Reigns Right, will get that win back because they're petty like that. Even though they always tell us wins and losses don't matter, you know, you always hear this bullshit. Wins and losses don't matter in the WWE universe, you know. But but the, the, believe me, they're, they're gonna get that win back. But in the meantime, I'm good. Christian comes out. We got the peep show. Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan come out. The crowd boos Jordan. By the way, Seth is such a lame face, man. Seth Rollins needs to be a heel. Not the chicken shit heel they had him be yeah, when he finally won the title, when he cashed in. Not that heel. Okay? A badass heel, but he needs to be a heel. We're here in Brooklyn! I'm like, Shut up. Jason Jordan, um... By WWE standards, I mean, he, he's doing good because he gets a reaction, right? When he's getting booed, he, he says a couple words and they boo him. And, and, uh, but I kind of like what he's doing. I'm going to be honest. I like how he's doing the whole playing the dad card. My, my, my father, my daddy, Kurt Angle. and all, I, I liked it. I did. Now the bar comes out and I'm confused. What a perfect opportunity for the bar to come out and start mocking Jason Jordan about his talking about his daddy, right? Instead, did they give a generic promo talking about how we don't set the bar, we are the bar, and like all this shit? For those that don't know, that that's um, Cesaro and Sheamus, okay? So they healed it up. And uh, Rollins and Jordan attack the bar. They get, you know, whatever. The confrontation. I don't remember Christian. Like The peep show's back, everybody. The peep show, right? How many questions did he ask? Does somebody count me the questions that he asked? What's the point of doing a, a, a little talk show if they're not going to ask anything? They said a couple things. The bar comes out. They start fighting like, wow, unbelievable storytelling. I mean, whoever wrote that is a fucking genius. I don't know if you could tell fucking sarcasm in my voice. 
Alexa Bliss and Charlotte are in the back. Flair pumps up Charlotte. They woo! What a weak segment, right? What a weak segment. And look, no, nothing against these legends. I don't want nothing bad to help them to happen to them or anything like that. But part of me is actually glad they're getting too old. And the reason why I know that sounds terrible, I know. But because at some point, the WWE has to drop the nostalgia acts. And they need to create new stars at some point. All right? Could you imagine when The Rock and Stone Cold and Triple H were all trying to become big names? But 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 every other month, Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels or Hulk Hogan would, would come and make them look stupid. Make you know look superior to them and then disappear. Could you imagine they would never become stars? Now, this happens to be a show that nostalgia made sense, but they still fucking failed. I'm okay with nostalgia once in a while, right? But when you bury talent in the process, I have an issue with that. Now, in this case, Flair wasn't burying anybody, uh, but I'm just saying that that came to my mind. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, this dude looks old. You know, like, it, it's... It's it's cool to see him because he's a legend and stuff like that. But man, he's just too old to be out there to be on TV. That's just my honest opinion. Okay. By the way, I don't know. Char- I don't know if Charlotte was wearing like very high heels or something. But man, was she towering over Alexa? I know Alexa Bliss is short, right? She's like five feet tall, you know. But man, she made Charlotte look like she was like six feet tall, man. Or six foot two. I mean, she looked fucking tall, you know, but uh, that's probably what it was. But uh, anyway, I still think the segment sucked. So more APA segments, everybody. And we had a straight and a flush, okay, on the same hand. You know how many years I've been playing poker? You know how unlikely that is? Like, it's, it's, Especially with the type of poker they're because they weren't playing Texas Hold'em, where at least you have some cards in the, on the table that everybody could use. Okay, no, no, this is like straight up poker. Okay, I don't know which rules they were using, but I'm just saying how ridiculous is that. But but anyway, it's very unlikely. It's possible, but very unlikely. Okay, and of course Raw's trying to be funny, guys. Vince thinks that this is Saturday Night Live. He thinks that Monday Night Raw, right? Is Matt TV? That's what Vince thinks. He thinks that that WWE Raw is is comedy hour. Now, I'm not saying there's no room for comedy, but holy shit, are they trying too hard? So why it is at the Manhattan Center? Kind of cool scene. Matt Hardy comes out. The elite chants happen. They start the match. And then they go to commercial. <laughs> Why? Like, you know, like what? I mean, what a horrible time to go to commercial. Right when the match starts? Could you imagine watching football and they, they, they do the kickoff. And right when the player catches the ball, they go to commercial. <laughs> Why would you do that? I mean, ding, ding, boxing fight. They meet in the center of the ring, and then they're like, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, the absurdity of it. This is how dead kayfabe is, right? By the way, something in this match, man, like magic was missing at the Manhattan Center. It's not that the fans were standing up or something. It was something missing. I don't know what it was. Limited energy, okay. But Wyatt goes over, he hits the sister Abigail. It was a decent match, but nothing spectacular, right? Um, not a match where the WWE has the ability to give some great. This this show should have had some classic matches. You know, I don't want to bring up a tragedy, but. 
when Eddie Guerrero passed away, some of those matches were like, honest to God, were pay-per-view worthy matches. Rey Mysterio against HBK. Even Triple H against Chris Benoit. Okay, now not to bring up names. Even Ric Flair and William Regal had a good match on that card. I'm trying to remember what, what other matches there were. But this was supposed to be, of course, different type of occasion. This, is, this wasn't one of morning or something. It was a case of celebration. But you would have, you would think that you're back at the Manhattan Center, right? I mean, I could think of a million things they could have done, right? But okay, th th that's that's what they came up with. Maybe they pictured it better. I don't know, right? But sometimes it doesn't work out. We're back at the Barclays. All right? The greatest women, quote unquote, superstars. So they're no longer calling them divas, guys. They're making history. No, no, look. I just, I don't, I just, it's not that I have an issue with them calling the women superstars. It's just that they just started doing it. And they're patting themselves on the back, okay, because they're doing it. You know, like they're, they're crediting themselves with making history, you know, after years of being misogynist pigs. You know, like it's insane, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I mean, okay. So the Bellas come out. Maurice comes out all pregnant and shit. Kelly Kelly comes out. Lillian Garcia comes out. Jacqueline comes out. By the way, Lillian Garcia is still there. Now, she hasn't gone anywhere. Like she still works for the company. But okay, I just saw her announced like not that long ago. But all right, Jacqueline comes out. Tori Wilson comes out. Holy shit. Tori Wilson is fucking, she's still smoking hot, man. She actually looked hotter than, than I remember. Those thighs, though. Holy shit. Those American thighs. I, I, I was thinking of that ACDC song. Shook me all night long. Right? Thinking about those American thighs. Holy shit. Tori Wilson. I was about to turn off the TV, too. I was tired of the show. And then I saw Tori Wilson. I'm like, holy shit. All right, I'll, I'll stick around. <laughs> right? uh, Michelle McCool comes out. This is how hot Tori Wilson is. She made Michelle McCool look ugly. All right. All right. Um, Terry Runnels comes out. She's standing next to Tori Wilson. Holy shit, she looks terrible next to Tori. All right. Uh, Maria comes out all pregnant and shit. All right. By the way, Mar Maria is carrying, like, the, is she having, like, triplets? Like, holy shit, bro. She looks like she's about to, like, to blow up, man. Uh, like, <laughs> I mean, holy shit. How many babies is she having? Did, did the big show impregnate her? Like, what the fuck's going on? What's going on here? And Trish comes out. All right, gets a big ovation. Probably got the biggest ovation of the night. Um, at least one out of the night, but of the divas that came out. Okay, I meant to say. So good to see Trish back. I have a feeling Trish is going to be at the Royal Rumble, by the way. Um, and as hot as Tori Wilson is, she doesn't belong in the Royal Rumble, right? She was never a wrestler, okay, uh, at all. But um, I wouldn't mind seeing Tori back, like in mud matches or something like that, you know. But, but anyway... <laughs> W2, um, why 2 is in the back with Elias? Ask for his guitar. He wants to sing him a song. Elias says, no, I'm not going to lend you my guitar. Chris Jericho says, well, don't worry. I have my own guitar. He pulls out the guitar. It was out of camera's view, but apparently Elias didn't see the guitar. But now I'm nitpicking, right? He sings a song for Elias. Pretty cool segment, Okay. Um, I like the part where he's about to say, you just made the, and he pulls out the list. And he says, oh, I'm just playing. Then he says, you just made the list. And Elias sold it very well. Um, Jericho 
Uh, one of the best segments of the night. It's good to see Jericho on Raw again. Fresh of breath air. Right? I would have preferred to see Jericho in the ring. They could have done something with Jericho and Elias in the ring. They could have done something there. You ha have them do a sing-off. I don't know. Something. You know, but they could have done something more with that. But, you know, Elias is liked by the crowd, by the way. He walks out to the ring. He wants to sing a song. He's, he's talking about, let's walk with Elias. WWE stands for walk with Elias. By the way, Jimmy Fallon is at a Raw. He points out at Jimmy Fallon, nothing ever happens with Jimmy Fallon. So it was a pointless call out. It made no sense. Like, it was, I guess the WWE just wanted to tell everybody that Jimmy Fallon was there. Because they kept saying, oh, all these celebrities are here. There was one celebrity that I saw. Like, well, who else was there? <laughs> what? A star studded, like, like all these celebrities and legends are here. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You had Jimmy Fallon there. Okay, that, that you flew out because Triple H went to the Jimmy Fallon show. He did it as a return favor. Right, but nonetheless, it was just kind of pointless how they pointed that out. So he sings, he's trashing the legends. The I, honest people, I thought, honest to God, when he said the Rock's name, I kept thinking about Hollywood Rock. I forgot what year it was, but before night, before WrestleMania nineteen. Uh, the Rock that came back from Hollywood and he was singing songs and stuff like that with his guitar and um, had a match with Stone Cold and then the match with he sang a match he saw he sang some songs about Goldberg and I was like man I kind of hope Rock comes out you know now deep down I knew the Rock wasn't there but I was like man I I hope that they pulled a swerve on us and snuck in Rock and nobody knows about it. But, of course, Rock didn't come out. Um, as I was hoping, like a legend came out, I was hoping it was maybe Jericho came out again or The Rock and the, he sings a song to Elias or something. Instead, we get John Cena. John Cena's music plays. And he walks out to John Cena Suck Chants. John Cena sucks. And John Cena smiles like an idiot. Cena plays it off like the crowd just came to life. He says, oh, now you come to life. The crowd was going crazy when Stone Cold, you know, son, the, the McMahon. So what are you talking about? But you know what he's doing? He's trying to pass it off like the crowd was dead until he came out. You know, because only John Cena could save the day. Okay, so he plays it off like the crowd just came to life. The crowd cheers when Elias tells Cena to shut up. They cheer. They don't boo. They cheer because he told him shut the hell up, right? And Cena's, you know, he says you ruined everything. Says Elias. Then Cena squares up, says, "Do son about it." Takes off his shirt. Takes him like four seconds to take off his shirt too. Every time he takes off his shirt with one hand, it's so stupid, right? Like, like somebody can just kick in the nuts while you're taking off your shirt, dude. Right? So anyway, Elias, you know, says that you don't tell me what to do. And, of course, he tries to heal it up because Vince will get mad. If you're the heel and you're getting cheered, Vince McMahon will get mad and bury your ass. So he's trying to get booed. Right? So he says, and these stupid fans or whatever he said, here, here in Brooklyn, don't tell me what to do. And some people booed, but it wasn't that significant. Elias asks he's going to exit the ring. And this is WWE writing, guys. Okay? I mean, they're so unpredictable. Because we don't see the, like, we never see that coming at all. Like, when the guy's acting, he's going to exit the ring. And then when the face turns around, he attacks. Like, we, we didn't see that coming whatsoever, right? Like, <laughs> okay. So he attacks. And I'll be honest, I thought Cena was going to do the AA and, Maybe ask Jimmy Fallon to come on. They're going to, you know, do that. But uh, Elias, you know, he 
he stops the uh, he reverses or whatever counters the the AA and then he hits John Cena with a low blow like a heel good heel would but the fans cheer <laughs> and uh, so he gets the best of Cena which basically means eventually Cena will get the best of him right I mean that's that's basically what's going to happen but um, but the crowd was pretty pretty dead by the end of that segment. You know, it was just it was stale. It fall flat. It fell flat, right? More APA crap. Slater is. I want you guys to listen to this this creative shit. Like some writers sat down. Like before I tell you what happened, the creative team all sat down. They've had a whole week, by the way, to, to put the show together. They all sat down in a conference or whatever. Somebody wrote this shit. It was reviewed by Stephanie and maybe by Triple H and eventually by Kevin Dunn and then by Vince McMahon. And they said, oh, this is great. We got to put this shit on TV. This is what we need to put on TV. This right here. This is... What some writer wrote, they're probably making six figures to write this shit, right? Probably making six figures to write this segment. To write crappy segments like this, like Vince, pay me. I'll write some crappy segments for you. You want me to write some cheesy jokes? And like, I could do that for six figures, Vince. Give D style a call. Like, I'll do that for six figures. But anyway, this is what happened. Let me see if I can find it. Whoa, hold on. More APA. Slater is caught stealing or cheating. I'm sorry. My apologies. Cheating. Bradshaw says, because um, it's pointed out that, oh, he's cheating and cards fall off of his pocket or something like that. And, you know, that's not cool. And he's arguing with – um. With titles O'Neill and Cruz and stuff, okay. Bradshaw says this is not a place for fighting. This is Monday Night Raw. If you're gonna fight, take it to the ring, he says. Wow. The million dollar man gets a royal flush, by the way. Right. And um, Ron Timmons says, damn. Then that's the segment. Oh, and there was a gordita on top of the, of the chips. <laughs> that, man, that's, so, that's so funny. You know, it's just, this is so creative, you know. But you guys get what happened? That's how they came up with the Slater and Rhino versus Tyde O'Neill and, and, you know, Cruz match. Because cause one of them was caught cheating. While they were playing poker in the back with APA. That's how they set up that match. Mark Henry runs into the Godfather. Talking about growing up, says Mark Henry. Because Godfather said they used to call this guy, you know, sexual chocolate back in the day. Right? Uh, the Godfather says uh, Mark Henry insinuates that he wants to be with what he assumes is one of Godfather's hoes. But Godfather says, oh, oh, this is my wife. And Mark Henry is like, oh, man. Wow, WWE. This, this, is some, this is some great writing, by the way. Right? This is some great writing right here. Right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> They're always talking about making history, making history. All right, like man, you're making history of the most pathetic, you know, you know, uh, segments of all time. All right, Titus O'Neil and Cruz walk out to the ring. Rhino and Slater go out to the ring. This match is because Slater was caught cheating in a in poker when they were playing with the APA. Wow, isn't this just amazing writing? 
I mean, what do you even need a general manager for? If wrestlers could just make their own matches because they caught a guy guy cheating in poker, you know? Like, I mean, think of the absurdity of this. So what, what was general manager Kurt Angle going to do in that 10-minute time slot? If, if Like, think about it. Like, you're running the show. What were they? What were they planning to do then? So tell me that that if Slater never cheated in poker, um, we, we would have maybe had a good wrestling match. What, what, what are you telling me here? Why even have it? Like, what did Kurt Angle didn't do anything? He's he's the guy that's running the show. What was he doing? Apparently, Slater and and Rhino just just walked to the ring and there was just a ref ready to go, just like that. They got in contact with the people in the back and everything, and they made the matches ASAP, just like that. I mean, th this is up there with with that stupid segment where our truth uh, was it our truth that that he stole the Snicker bar from somebody, so they did a match. I mean, it's, this is right up there. This is on, on the twenty fifth anniversary of Raw, right here. To make matters worse, the match ends because it sucks. Now, actually, um, I think that's the real reason they ended it, but kayfabe, because all four men were in the ring and they weren't listening to the ref, so the ref just stopped the match. Because that's that's, that's what refs always do, right? Like, like really? <laughs> what? The Dudleys come out. The Dudley boys come out and all four men of your current roster get out of the ring like chicken shits. What are you selling to me with these wrestlers on TV? That they're that 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 that, that, that they're badasses? Or a bunch of because why why am I watching them if they're just a bunch of fucking chicken shits that will get out of the ring in fear? Because two old ass Dudley boys come out. Don't get me wrong, I like the Dudley boys. But think of the absurdity of this. Could you imagine when the Dudley boys were tag team champions or uh, you know the height of the attitude era? Could you imagine if the Dudley boys and Edge and Christian were in the ring? And then Demolition came out. Or the Road Warriors came out. And they all got out of the ring in fear. Would it put the Road Warriors over, Demolition over? Yeah. Would it do anything for these guys? Would they have become the legends they became? No. They couldn't come up with a better way to use the Dudley Boys. So anyway, I believe Rhino throws Slater in the ring. And they all just watch as Slater gets buried again. They do the table spot. They put him through the table and, you know, nice nostalgia. Wow. Man, this is, this is some innovative shit, right? Like, <laughs> come on, man. I guess Rhino is done with Slater? Like, what's going on? Yeah, they did the 3D on the table. By the way, I still remember when Slater was over. They could have done something with his. This guy got himself over. The whole I got kids gimmick. He, he was going somewhere with that. When he was a free agent and all that, like he got over. Like Slater and Rhino in general were over as a team. They made him champions in SmackDown. And now they're just being jobbed out to the fucking... They're using Slater to have Legends put them through the tables. Wow. AJ Styles is backstage. SmackDown superstar, but okay. M remember, I thought they were supposed to be competing with one another, the, the, the brands. But, you know, fine. 25th anniversary, it's a big deal because... of. Yeah, because AJ Styles was such a big part of Monday Night Raw over the years. Like, what? Like, what? Oh, okay. Now, look, AJ Styles is my favorite superstar right now. He's my favorite wrestler on WWE. 
right? But it was just random. But I'm okay with it. For a lot of the other crap I was seeing, it was a fresh breath there. He tells a girl, he says, oh, I got somebody special to conduct this interview with me. Wow, hard-hitting interview, huh? He introduces Mean Gene Oakland. Now, I never trust the backstage segments because I you, you don't really know if that's a crowd or not because it could pipe that in. But I believe that the crowd will go crazy for Mean Gene. Right? I, I always liked Mean Gene, one of the best interviewers of all time. Mean Gene Oakland asked one question. He just asked him about this, the, the title match you have against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, which should be a triple threat match, by the way, but whatever, right? Like, how do you put the title on the line against two guys? That's so stupid, right? AJ Styles does a Hulk Hogan. Well, let me tell you something, Gene. He does that. And then... He proceeds to talk. Uh, AJ refers to them as Kami. Yeah, very innovative stuff at WWE. Um, you could tell a writer gave him that. Like, like you could tell, like, oh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. You're going to call him Kami. You know, Minji looks lost and confused. Wow, what an interview, you know. What was – if that's – the girl could have asked you that. Like, he didn't conduct an interview. He asked you one question. What a hard-hitting interview. <laughs> God damn. Well, this is stupid, man. All right? This, by the way, at this point, I mean, this show is so disappointing. What a disappointing show. I was actually looking forward to this show. Like, I was going to tell myself, honest to God, man, WWE has been sucking, but when it comes to this nostalgia stuff, man, they're good at that. And look, their, pack, their video packages and all that, great stuff. I don't have a problem with that. The little nostalgia stuff, the Manhattan Center, I liked it. But, man, the show in general was just horrible. We're back at the Manhattan Center. Lawler, who's clearly told to say, we've witnessed some of the best moments of Raw tonight. In the history of Raw, like, like really? Okay. DX comes out. They are green glow sticks. Old generation X, man. God damn, they look old. HBK and Triple H try the typical shit. HBK was saying some eh, suspect stuff because they're trying to be funny. Make a suspect thing sound. They're so funny. Okay? Okay? Triple H starts the whole 25 years ago, blah, 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 blah. And here's the part that pissed me off. This part pissed me the fuck off. The first part, not so much. He name drops China and Rick Rude. He even says the ninth wonder of the world. She gets a big ovation. Yeah, you should put her in the Hall of Fame before she passed away. She should have put, been put in the Hall of Fame a long time ago. They put Beth Phoenix in the Hall of Fame, but not China. Are you kidding me? Because she did porn, really. So what? So what if she did porn? Right? So she wasn't in a good place. I mean, you, you put – there's some people on there that are in the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Snook is in the Hall of Fame. I mean, the, that dude, he killed somebody. Right? It's not like Vince didn't know about it. Sonny already did porn from what I've read. But apparently you got to do the porn after you're inducted. Oh, I see. But anyway, hopefully they get her in the Hall of Fame because China deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Rick Root's already in the Hall of Fame and well-deserved, right? And here's the part that pissed me off. Triple H insinuates that DX was around for the start of Raw. 
That is wrong. DX came out years later. He put himself over with a tank, okay, saying that we that it was at Raw where we drove a tank to WCW and we, quote, unquote, started a war. Revisionist history much? Now, I'm not saying that the whole tank thing wasn't a, a good segment or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I enjoyed that segment. It's an important segment in Raw history. It is. But that didn't start the war. The war was already ongoing. And to mislead people and make people, like, to just revise history and make it sound. And maybe if I give him the benefit of the doubt, it's a live show. And maybe he misspoke, but I doubt it. This was just a click reunion. Okay, that's all it was. And, and, and to, you know, pump themselves up and give this revisionist history. Monday Night Raw was possible, right? Because of names like Brett the Hitman Hart, and the other guy was standing right next to you, HBK. It, it was the next thing that Vince was doing after the Hogan era. Triple H came in years later. 25 years ago, we're about to have WrestleMania, what, 34? Around WrestleMania 9 is when Raw started. Triple H made his debut before WrestleMania 12. DX wasn't really around till before, or like I believe after WrestleMania 13. Like this... Like almost four years after Raw even made its debut. No mention of Bobby Heenan. No mention of the Macho Man. These are the people that introduced Raw to the show. They're, they're the ones that were significant to the Manhattan Center. DX had nothing to do with that. DX significance is later. Look, I get that they won the Monday Night Wars and all that, but you can't rewrite history. Sorry, pal. I lived through that. I was a fan of wrestling. I know what I saw. You didn't start the war. You're shitting me. DX wasn't there when you started the Manhattan Center. Are you shitting me? Are you kidding me? Triple A just putting himself over. He always does this shit. And he wonders why people hate him. More DX guys come out. Beer Belly Dog comes out. Holy shit, Road Dog. <laughs> Damn. Road Dog's had a, too many hot dogs. <laughs> right? But uh, <laughs> hot dog Jesse James comes out. Uh, the usual shit. And they introduced X Pac. Man, I knew this was a mistake. X Pac should have done his own thing. X Pac is still wrestling in the Indies. You could have done a match with X Pac as a one, two, three kid. Could he? That's what I would have done. Hey, you know, give me one of these cruiserweights. We're not doing shit with him anyway. Give me the best worker you got. Like, give me somebody. Tony Nese. I don't care. And have him do like a, a great match against – let him come out as a one, two, three kid. He's still, he's still in good shape. He's still in the indies. You could have done something special, but no. Comes out of X-Pac at the Manhattan Center where he made a name for himself, beating Razor Ramon. Isn't this crazy? This is insane. The, the fans even start chanting one, two, three. I'm like, well, there you go. You you fucked that one up. Boy, did they fuck that up. If, if you're going to have Heath Slater look like an idiot, I would rather you have put Heath, Heath Slater against a one, two, three kid at the Manhattan Center. Let him have a competitive match, and the one, two, three kid goes over. Whatever. You're not doing shit with Slater anyway. 
They could have done a million things. That could have started raw. That would have meant the buzz would have been real. But no, we, we have to see Vince. I'm, I'm sorry, Stephanie and Shane, you know, brotherly and sisterly love, breaking kayfabe and shit, thanking everybody for twenty. Like we get it. What are you doing? Wasting airtime thanking everybody for 25 years. What are you doing? Come on, get, get, get the show going. Come on. How many times are you gonna thank people for, for tuning in for 25 years? Holy shit. I want to thank everyone. It wasn't for you. It wouldn't be possible. Like, shut up already. Right? Say one time, say thank you at the very start of the show or at the very end of the show, and that's it. Believe it or not, fans just want to see good wrestling and great promos. They don't want to be thanked for two, three hours, right? You want to show appreciation? Give me good wrestling on TV. Now, here's the part that this, I mean, a lot of shit pissed me off. They introduced Razor Ramon. I don't know who better to introduce Razor Ramon than the one, two, three kid, right? So he comes out. And they go to commercial. Jesus Christ. They went to commercial. I couldn't believe it. Uh, how cool is this? Like Razor, uh, like for the Scott Hall is going to come out as fucking Razor Ramon. We haven't seen Razor Ramon, not Scott Hall, the character Razor Ramon in years. That would have been such a huge moment. By the way, why the red? Why is he wearing red? A black suit with red. That's Scott Hall. Now, I'm not saying, okay, obviously, he's not in the shape he used to be, but have him dressed like Razor Ramon, like a Cuban dude. You know, like, like with a gold. Like, I know I'm stereotyping now, but, you know, Razor Ramon with, with the gold chains and, and stuff like that. With a fucking, like, like he's from fucking Miami or some shit. But, but no big deal, though. I'll let that go. Obviously, how can that, how could they not get this right? How do they not get this right? Like, fuck the New Age Outlaws. If you, if you knew you were pressed for time... Then you tell him, sorry, you're not going to make, we, we got to get Razor Ramon out there. Okay, we're, we're, we're short on time. Maybe tri if Triple H wasn't giving his revisionist history, saying how everything started here with DX in the Manhattan Center. Like, no, it didn't, you fucking liar. That's a flat out lie. That is a flat out lie. Okay. By the way, how could you not have Brett the Hitman Hart on the show? H how does that happen? Brett the Hitman Hart at the Manhattan Center, would have I mean, that would have been huge. You could have had him in, in the corner of somebody, and you could have had, you know, Razor Ramon in the corner of somebody else or something like that. You could have had a match. You could have done a million things. Now they've done this before, but here it would have made sense. I would have, I would have gotten a Natalie, right, the, from SmackDown. I mean, it's not like they cared, okay? Against Charlotte, do it at the Manhattan Center. Flair in one corner. F Flair was at the Manhattan Center, I, I believe, in the first Raw, okay, or one of the first Raws against like Mr. Perfect. I mean, they could have done a million things, man, okay. So, anyways, six commercials, five or six, I forgot. I didn't, but ho like, I'm thinking to myself, Razor Ramon just came out. Like, how long can he just stand there, right? And it's clear that after they came back from commercial, they gave him the cue to go. I mean, this is either that or they pre-recorded it, uh, or not not pre-recorded, but they recorded that part, 
Okay? Because they obviously fucked up. He does a hey yo. He's acting like a razor. But then he does an NWO too sweet. And I'm like, well, this 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 isn't Razor Ramon. This is this is Scott Hall. Which is cool, but but I'm just saying. The Balor Club walks out. A small crowd there, but Balor is super over. All right? Because uh, Vince was saying Balor isn't over. All right? JR saying he doesn't like he doesn't like this. Right? But then they do the too sweet in the middle of the ring. Okay? So giving them that rub, obviously. So I don't have a problem with that. And then... I got this sick feeling in my stomach when the following happened. The revival comes out. And they're going to wrestle Gallows and Anderson. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, they're going to bury him. I, I knew it. And I've been here. I was reading rumors that Vince was angry with them because they said they were not sports entertainers. They're pro wrestlers. What a crime. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but apparently Vince was livid about that. Now, first of all, why was this the main event of Raw, like the last match? I don't know. Um, but it was a short match. Now, was it short because they were pressed on time? Or, or was it short because or for whatever, you know, I don't know. Like, to be honest with you, I honestly think they fucked up. They should have just done a pre-recorded show at the Manhattan Center and replayed some of those portions uh, while you were live at Barclays. That, that's what they should have done, right, to manage everything better. But, but hey, okay. Or, or they should have done the first two hours at Barclays and the last hour at the Manhattan Center or vice versa, Right. So the revival's buried. Everybody, you know, beats them up, and these old farts beat them up, and you know, it's, they hit their finishers on them, and uh, Balor joins in and hits them, and this, that, and a third, and you know, they trade turns with them and just make them look stupid. Such a great tag team with so much potential. You could do so much with a revival. And you bury them like this. Triple H uh, raises the arm of Balor. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Maybe he'll win the Royal Rumble. Maybe. I hope. I think Raw's over. I completely forgot. Okay. <laughs> that they were going to have Lesnar, Kane, and Strowman in the ring. All this makes no sense, but but okay, let's go over it. Kurt Angle walks out with all these superstars and legends. I mean, Eric Bischoff, me, I think Mean Gene Okerling was out there. I'm like, okay, like, well, what are they doing here, right? I had completely forgot that they were going to do the segment with the three guys. I forgot about Brock, and like, I just forgotten about it. I was just so pissed off with Triple H's promo and, and how they buried the revival. I was just like done with the show. I was so I was this close and I'm holding my index finger and my thumb about a needle's length away from each other. Right? I was that close to just turning off the TV. But then Kurt Angle comes out. They're like they go back to Barton Center. And they go to commercial. Like, <laughs> You're already over the time, and you're going to come. What are you doing? Like, this is stupid. By the way, Kurt didn't even work tonight. Wrestlers, you know, the matches were already said, like, just two of them. And and um, <laughs> Slater and Rhino did their own match with uh, with titles with Neil and Cruz anyway. Like, they're making their own matches, wrestlers now. So what do you need a GM for? Anyway. By the way, Big E was dancing like a stripper on the ring apron. Why? I don't know. Like this, this is stupid. Like Big E will never be a main eventer or anything because of how they're portraying him right now, you know. And he's obviously not doing himself any favors, you know. Oh yeah, Big E. Like Vince is gonna give you a big push, 
Okay, if, if you keep, you know, making a fool of yourself like that, it's totally going to happen. Okay? And then Corey says, before they go to commercial, Barclays, enjoy the roof while you still have it. <laughs> what? Blow the roof off the place? Really? Really? Like, the only thing you're going to explode is my fucking head. Right? Like, what? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this show's on fire, man. Oh, yeah, the, the roof is on fire. Yeah, okay, Corey. You could totally tell they're being told to say this. All right? Just like Jerry Lawler saying, you know, we have witnessed some of the best moments in Raw history tonight. Like, what happened at Raw that was so amazing? So everybody's just standing outside, right? So so they go to commercial. Okay, I can't I can't wait for the roof to blow up. Four or five more commercials. They have three fucking hours, and we're already like ten minutes over the fucking show. Three three hours and ten minutes. I've had enough of Raw already. I'm I'm ready for this thing to end. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe they'll do something amazing. Maybe something great will happen. By the way, this is the go home, go home show. Not one promo from anybody about winning the Royal Rumble by anyone. Unless I missed it. I mean, it's only a title shot at WrestleMania, the main event at WrestleMania. That's all. Why would anybody, any superstar say anything, right? We can't, we can't call them wrestlers because you'll get buried like the fucking revival. So, so, so we'll just go with superstar. <laughs> All right, so anyway, Kurt Angle makes the announcement. Big E. He's never going to be a believable big man, okay, with the retarded faces he makes, these over-the-top expressions that Big E makes, and the New Day in general, you know? Like, I don't know, like, is it like, I don't know, like, they make these, like, they act stupid, and maybe they go to the back, and Vince is like, oh, yeah, that was so funny, haha. <laughs> like, but, you know, they're never going to be taken serious. These are three very talented guys, but they're never going to be taken serious with this, with this, this, this fucking gimmick. And Big E, these over the top expression, facial expressions. I want to say, like, Kurt Angle said, first, we're going to announce, uh, we're going to introduce, um, uh, the monster among men, Strowman, and Biggie makes this expression like he's scared. Like, you're burying yourself, man, right? You're like fucking 230 pounds. What the fuck are you scared of? I mean, holy shit! This roster of fucking pussies. Like, like it's insane. Like, if you're selling yourself as you're scared of everything, then what the fuck? What am I watching? Right? So anyway, Strowman comes out, and then my satellite feed actually went out. So I actually got a little bit of a break. And I was actually hoping it didn't come back. <laughs> but, the, but the signal came back. When the signal came back, Paul Heyman, it was a brief thing. King was already in the ring. So I didn't miss anything. I can't came out. Okay. Ooh, I haven't seen that before. Right? Paul Heyman is doing the usual, my name is Paul Heyman, blah, 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 blah. We get it. Introduces Lesnar. Lesnar, okay, like I, I could picture Vince writing this whole thing out. Like, I, I could picture him like talking to Brock and telling him exactly what he needs to do. See, what you got to do is you're going to slowly take off your belt and then you're going to run to the ring. Oh, yeah. Like, like you know, like, okay. Like, if you're going to, like, why walk out with a belt? Like, think about it. If you're ready to throw down, then why would you walk out with the belt just to take off the belt and then run to the ring? That makes no sense. Should have just had, you know, and I know these are little details, but they don't think about these things. Like, this doesn't, it doesn't take a genius. Have Paul Hamey walk out with a belt, and then people are wondering, why does he have the belt? And as soon as Leisure comes out, then you, right off the bat, as a viewer, you know, Oh, he's ready to throw down. All right? You see how much more effective that is? Think about it. 
But anyway, this has to be the most pointless segment I've ever seen in my life. It's just pointless. By the way, why do you have guys like Eric Bischoff out there? For what? Like, why is Mean Gene Okunin out there? What are they? What's the purpose of having a lot of these "quote unquote" legends out there for this confrontation? What was the point of it? It made no sense. Why were they out there for this segment? It made no. It was a waste of fucking time. So apparently, uh, I think Strowman knocks down Kane, and then he gets out of the ring. He fights with Lesnar on the outside. I guess Lesnar puts him down. Lesnar gets to the ring. F5 is Kane. The big red machine is hit with an F5, and we never see him for the next fucking five minutes of, of Raw. Right? He just rolls to the outside. That's it. Well, why is he even in the fucking match? We don't see him at all like, for the next five minutes? Strowman throws uh, Lesnar against a barricade. That was actually a pretty big bump. And then he slams him against the table. Could have used the spot at the Royal Rumble, but no, you want to use it at Raw. Okay. And all these people, like all these legends, are just there watching. For what reason? What was the reason to just put them on the ring? For what? None of them could cut a good promo. Why are they out there? It made like what? What am I looking forward to now? I mean, I, I was already not looking forward to the match, but you've, you've already given me everything these guys could do. Shane's already chokeslammed these guys, and, he, you know, he's <laughs> Strowman's already hit everybody with his moves, and Lesnar's already F5'd both guys. Like, I think, right, I, at least Kane. Like, what, what, what is there left to do? They've already done everything. You've already given us everything they could do for free on TV. And why is Kane there? Why is Kane there? Like, is Kane, like, is it me or is it Kane just there to take the pinfall? Like, that's that's why he's, it's put, like, at least, if Kane, Kane's not going to win, at least make him look strong. This is the ending segment of Raw 25, 25 year anniversary. The show you've been pumping up for the last few weeks. This is the best that all these writers came up with. See, what we're going to do is we're going to have all the like – somebody wrote this. Like We're going to have all the legends walk out, surround the ring for no apparent fucking reason. We're not going to have security out there. We're not going to have police officers out there with guns to sell how dangerous these motherfuckers are. No, 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 no. We're going to have fucking Eric Bischoff out there and Goldust and all these old farts and Mean Gene and, and the New Day where, where Big E weighs like 250 pounds, looks scared that Braun Strowman is walking out to the ring. What's the fucking point? It made no sense. Kane shouldn't even be in this match. I would rather see uh, seen Kane in the Royal Rumble. Like to be honest with you, Kane should never have come back until the Royal Rumble. Like he was out for a while, then they brought him back to beat Finn Balor for no reason. Like what the what the what was the point of that? Kane should have come back. Like had him come out like as the you know number five entrant or something at the Royal Rumble, it would have gotten a pop, okay. You know, or you could have saved him for Raw twenty five, because he was a big part part of Monday Night Raw for many years. And you could have had him say, "I'm inducted. I I'm now entering the Royal Rumble." Blah 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 blah, and that's it. I don't mind Kane eliminating a couple guys, and then he's not going to win the Royal Rumble, but that's his place. I think he holds like the all-time record in eliminations or something like that, or he's about to break it or something like that. Have him do that before you know he gets a send-off. Why is he in this match? It makes no sense. What a terrible show. 
Well, well this, this show is just terrible. Like you start the show with 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 uh, at the Manhattan Center just to go to the Barclays Center. Oh, fucking Stephanie and Shane. This is look. The show had some good moments. As much as I don't like Roman Reigns, okay. As much as I, I hate the guy, all right. Not literally, but I dislike him as a as a character. Okay, I don't like the fact that he he's the top guy or whatever. That's being shoved down people's throats. But the best part of, of Raw, as much as I hate to admit it, was the Miz versus fucking Roman Reigns. And that I think that finish was brilliant. That was good old-fashioned professional wrestling right there. That finish. You know, seeing Stone Cold was nice, but is that really the best it could have done? You know, for the time that Vince was healing it up and how he threw Shane under the bus, that was kind of cool. That was funny, you know, but I can't, I don't know. The, the, it was just, the rest of the show was just trash, in my opinion. I expected a lot better. The Undertaker. Well, why is he still a dead man? Well, what's the point? He should have just come out with a biker gimmick and, like, stop being the dead man. Like, talking about they, they're going to pay the Reaper and blah, blah, blah. Like, who cares about that? That's done. They better not do another Undertaker match at WrestleMania. Holy shit. Nobody wants to see that. All right? Nobody. It was cool seeing Scott Hall, but, you know, I mean, I don't know. Everything was just a letdown. I mean, this is... I was hoping Bret Hart would have been in the show. He wasn't. I don't even remember them showing anything of Bret Hart in the show. It was such a big part of the show for the first four or five years. You know? How could he not be? Like It's, just, it's insane. But um, with that said, now I'll open up the chat. <laughs> All right. Not going to go over through all the comments, of course, but um, I'm going to open up the chat really quick so you guys can tell. I want to know what you guys think here. By the way, if you're just tuning in, thumbs up the video. Quite a few comments here. Some vid says it was complete trash. Yeah, 99% trash. Prodigy, I saw photos of Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon starting off Raw, not watching. Trash. Today was the day that I was going to watch Raw in full. Not live, but f because fuck that. King, your mother's... <laughs> okay, man, I got to get some weed. All right. Prodigy, 0 out of 10 rating for me. You need that... Uh, you need to... You need that to watch this garbage weed, I guess he's talking about. Uh, was it raw in the Barclays Center? It was, but it was also at the Manhattan Center. Some vids. This product today is way too corny. That was the team. That's what TNA did a lot better. WWE is trying to be taken seriously. It's fucking embarrassing now how corny and stupid today's product is. Cybergenetic Slayer. Vince gave himself a plaque. Laughing my ass off. Okay, Cybergenetic Slayer, this dude's ego continues to grow out of control. Well, wh whose ego? Oh, Vince? Uh, Man in Water, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. And how do you have Stone Cold come back? And it's not JR. That, that's on the mind. I mean, this is insane. Man in Water, good God Almighty, he's broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cybergenic Slayer, they, they had Reigns versus Miss on Raw 25. Yeah. David Johnson, Raw 25 was trash besides the ho homie Stone Cold, of course. Cybergenic Slayer, Austin's pop says a whole lot about the product in 2018. Hulk Hogan, they actually had Mean Gene without the Hulkster. What's up with that? I think they're going to save Hulk Hogan for the uh, WrestleMania. They're kind of... Worry about it because of the whole racist thing, racist comments he made. Uh, man in water, be a man, Hulk. 
Come on, don't be scared. That Macho Man song. Okay, Savage Jenny Slayer, be a man. What's up with that? Get man of water. What do you have against the children's hospital, you wuss? <laughs> anyway, you guys should check out Macho Man's interview uh, where he goes, a shoot interview against Hogan. Hogan, you coward! Okay, uh, Crucito, that's why the Undertaker made it seem like his hands were lethal and put his hands up when he wore MMA gloves. Dumb divas. Cruzito Undertaker should have come out as big evil one time. Limp Biscuit rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, that's what he should have done. But uh, And then he didn't even look right. He looked like the Ministry of Darkness Undertaker. I, I don't want to see the Undertaker at the Manhattan Center. And this is the old school Undertaker. And he can't even wear that. He's not slim like that no more. So he can't do that. Just, just come out as a biker, bro. Like, come out on the bike. Some vids. Well, I'll do a video about that later, bro. Crucito. That would have made the whole anniversary worth it. Seen Taker in his Harley again. Yeah. Uh, Mike 104. I played Texas Hold'em the other day, and my boy, uh, the chick, got a royal flush. I lost. It's it's more possible with Texas Hold'em, for sure. Uh, Frank if I was there at Barclays crowd, it was let down. By the way, I never got in the Royal Flush. That, that is amazing. Frank, if watching on TV for almost 45 minutes uh, at the end. Blood Boxing Returns. Another bad show. Yes, bro, another bad show. Uh, Cyber Genetic Slayer, that, that would be so bad if it happened in a PBC broadcast. All right. Mike Dole 104, earlier you had said Thurman and wife were going to open Weave Restaurant. Okay. All right, all right, all right. We're bashing. Man, even the wrestling videos, uh, Keith Thurman gets, gets, gets bashed. <laughs> I think I heard J.R. and King talk about uh, Keith Thurman ducking Spence. But I might have heard that, but m maybe I didn't. I don't know. Cybergenic Slayer, yeah. Tori did look good. I got to admit. I, I even looked her up on Facebook. I'm like, damn. Is this... She still looks as like she looked like back in Nitro. Like it's, it's insane. Hulk Hogan, man, Tori, all I needed was Stacey Kleber to come out. Yeah, what happened with Stacey Kleber? Hulk Hogan, fuck you, Cena, the shit factor of pro wrestling. Reef, the watcher, damn, I missed it. Just seen a few clips of segments. It was that bad? No, I think it was. TNN Sports, the fact Austin didn't say anything was confusing. Yeah. Cyber J said, tell me Hunter didn't go there. Hunter went there. I, I told you what he said. Bo Dallas looks more like Razor Ramon with the chains. <laughs> Man of water, if the show is so bad, why do you still watch? I just watch old clips on YouTube. Well, first of all, I don't watch it every week. But I, I made an exception for this show. Plus, I get to do these reviews. But, 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 this style, you don't understand. This is history. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hulk Hogan, it's going to be Kane. Man, if they make Kane champion, I swear to fucking God, man. I, I, I'm, if Kane becomes champion at the Royal Rumble, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, it's okay. They should have brought back Rey Mysterio. I would have been for that, yeah. Why not? Rey Mysterio, for sure. I, I would have been down with that. The Big Show wasn't even on the show. Is he injured? Like, what, why isn't he on the show? They should also have brought back Val Venus for a promo. Yeah, something. Hello, ladies. Spence hooks in the body. By God. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Jerry uh, Lauder said something about uh, Keith Thurman ducking Spence. I'm not sure though. Uh, I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe I was just hearing things. Um, <laughs> that was the best part of the show. <laughs> River Series and Lucha Underground right now. Yeah, but Lucha Underground is pre-recorded, bro. It's it's Lucha Underground is more like a show, right? By the way, I know a new season of Lucha Underground is going to start. Since I'm literally like, like, this is the first Raw I've seen in its entirety in a long time, right? And this is the reason I don't watch it. But since... 
I'm probably going to give Lucha Underground a shot. Um, I'll probably have to get used to it. I know it's done more like a. It's it's more like a TV show. I, I guess they're all TV shows, but more than a wrestling promotion. You know, you know if that makes sense. So I'll get I'll give Lucha Underground a shot. I know there's a lot of people that say it's kind of fun and uh, it's and that it's interesting. So I'll give it a shot and I'll see if I like it or not. But um, if I don't like for those for those of you that are recommending me to watch it, like, like, if I don't like it, you're gonna hear it. Like I'm gonna tell you I don't like it. Uh, so just be ready for that, right? But if I like it, I'll say I like it. Yeah, Mysterio should already be in the Hall of Fame, you know. Alberto Del Rio, um, this he has too many personal issues, and that's probably the reason Bret Hart was not invited to this show, uh, or maybe he was and he declined, was because he's recently been making statements about Eric Bischoff and. Uh, he's still making statements about Triple H. In his defense, people ask him these questions, and he just he answers honestly, you know. But and people are like, "Why does Bret Hart keep bringing this stuff back up?" Because people keep asking him, you know. So, season three, Lucha Underground was the best yet. I mean, I'll check it out. I stopped watching Lucha Underground, says uh, Prince White Charming, when they made Johnny Gonzalez's wife sexy star, the heavyweight champ. So they made a woman the heavyweight champion? Uh, I guess I'm confused. but Did I watch uh, Music versus uh, Nah? No, I did not get to watch that at all, actually. I, I went out on Saturday night, but I, I wasn't watching fights, so. It is what it is. Anyways, guys, that's my uh, take. That's my Monday night review. For those that came in late, you could watch the rest of the review when it comes on archive in a couple of minutes. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Thanks to those that joined me. And um, no, I'm not doing a review for, for SmackDown tomorrow. Okay, that's not going to happen. But as promised, I would be I will be doing a review for the Royal Rumble after the pay-per-view. It's not gonna be a thorough segment by segment thing. I'm just gonna come on here, give you my thoughts on the winner of the Royal Rumble and and, and some of the matches and just go from there. I'm not gonna do the pre-show, okay? So I don't have that much time on my hands. But um, I always watch the Royal Rumble and I'll do a review on that. Uh, yes, I know about the rumors of supposedly uh, Daniel Bryan might be making a surprise might be a surprise entry and it might win. I'm not against that whatsoever if that were to happen, but I hope it's uh, Finn Balor. I hope Finn Balor wins, but um, I hope it's a good match. They better make up with it in the match because the promotion for this Royal Rumble has been atrocious. It's almost like since they're having the first women's Royal Rumble, they don't want to talk about the men's Royal Rumble because it might appear sexist, right? Who fucking knows? But not one interview tonight. Maybe I missed it, but not one of somebody saying, I'm going to win the Royal Rumble. I'm going to go to WrestleMania. Not one. Not one segment of somebody pointing at the WrestleMania sign. Something. Give me something. Right and yes, Triple H went there. Uh, revisionist history at its finest. You heard D Style say here, right live, and, and and there's look, there's big channels on here that cover wrestling. If they don't point that out, point it out for them in their comment sections. Tell them that you catch what Triple H said, because I I want that to spread like wildfire. I really do. I really hope one of these solemn monsters, somebody, I hope that they bring it up. Okay? So anyway, Luch Underground has good wrestlers but terrible storylines. This Prince White Charming. Well, I could believe that. Yeah, I, I don't know of a luchadora, uh, a woman becoming, I mean, that that's, that's Vince Russo territory right there. 
You know, I mean, that's that's what that is. Is Vince Russo running Lucha Underground? What's going on? Now I don't know if I'm going to watch it after hearing this shit. <laughs> that's terrible. What? Anyway, I, I've already covered enough terrible things. I don't need to hear more terrible things. Um, this is D-Style. I'm out. Peace.